First thing I'm going to do is when I'm looking through here is give a, an estimate to the number of bacteria that I'm seeing in this field. And you have to remember to focus from the bottom of your field of view up all the way through until you don't see anything more going out the other side. So you're over um, focus here. So now, how many bacteria did you see? You know, there's just a few, there's a lot. I'm going through all of those layers, looking at the bacteria, and I can see that in this field of view, I'm looking at about 2,000 bacteria in that field. How do I know? Because I have counted fields like this hundreds, if not millions of times, and I have a pretty good feeling for when I'm looking at this density of bacteria. Now, if you've not done this before, you get to you know, split up and then take your field, split it in half. Can you count the bacteria in the upper half? Well, still way too many. So let's cut, cut my field of view into fourths. Can I count the bacteria in just that fourth of my field? Well, still way too many. So can I cut it into an eighth? Can I cut it into a sixteenth? So how small a sliver do I need to have to make this a countable number? And I would probably in this particular field split it up into a sixteenth and then you're going to do the best you can to just count the bacteria in that little sliver. What if you go wrong somewhere? Uh, this is not that precise. This kind of methodology we want to get a general idea. Are we talking about 400 or 500? Are we talking 1000 or are we talking 1100? So I would count the number of bacteria and you just have to you know, go to some reference material, get a real clear idea of what all of the different sizes and shape of the bacteria are. And so I'm easily going to be saying that I've got about 75 bacteria in that 1 16th of the field. So 75 times, um, you know, we're, we've got to multiply by 16 to bring it up to the number of bacteria that would be in that whole field. So we're going to be about 2,000. So um, close enough. So I've got my bacteria counted. I'm going to write that number down here on my first field of view. It's a, you know, a generalization, but we're close. Now I want to describe the kinds of bacteria that I'm, in, I'm seeing in here. And I'm seeing lots of little cocci. So as I'm scanning around the field, looking at the sizes and shapes of the bacteria, lots of little cocci. Maybe a few rods, we've got some diplococci, two um, cocci chained up, little rods, a slightly longer rod. So that's what I'm going to write down here. I've got about three different small cocci. I've got some diplococci, different species. Clearly I can see that the sizes and shapes are different, so I can describe these different species. I've got some very small rods and I've got a few slightly longer rods. And that's going to give me a description of the species diversity in this sample. So this is not impressive with respect to how many different species of bacteria that I'm dealing with. Uh, I can only discern maybe six different species of bacteria in this first field. Now if I see any more uh, as I go along through, I will add them into my species list. Now, got the bacteria dealt with. I'm going to quick do a scan and say how many fungi do I see in here. And focusing up and down, trying to see some nice uniform diameter uh, strands, filaments, which would be our fungi. I've got a little root material there, but because I can see lots and lots of different cells in that um, bit, that strand there, I will reject that as being fungus. That's root material. Um, so looking through this field, no fungi. Now I'm going to look for my protozoa. Focusing up and down, I'm looking for any kind of movement. I'm looking for the flagellates bumbling along. I'm looking for the oozing movement of amoebae. And I'm looking for the ciliates going zoom, 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 quickie, quick moving, very smoothly moving. No one. There is no motion in this sample. So, no protozoa, and I will record that uh, in my information. So, no fungi, no protozoa, and I can see there are no nematodes in here. So, there we are. We're done with that field. How long did that take me? Well, I took longer explaining what I'm doing than it actually took me to um, estimate or determine 
what biology was in the sample. So moving on to my next field. Now, I recommend that you take your eyeballs off your microscope and look at your slide and move to your next field so that you're not biasing. If you keep looking through here and you move your microscope, the, your slide along, looking at different parts of your sample, you can bias this because you go, ooh, what is that cool thing? What am I seeing? If you do that, you can't really count that field. You can have some fun looking at those organisms, but you really can't count it as um, randomly sampling from your um, sample on, on your slide. So I move this randomly to the next field, and I'm going to go through the same process. How many bacteria here? Well, there's a few less in this picture, but I've got more clumps. So I can see I've got really good aggregates in here, and I may count each one of those aggregates as being uh, more or less about 100 bacteria. This size aggregate, what's the number of bacteria? Well, count them. Take a look at one of your aggregates and all the little grainy things in that aggregate count it as bacteria. So what's the typical number of bacteria you have per aggregate that you're looking at? So you know, I'm going 100 because I've sat down and counted these things in the past and I know this size aggregate and I can quickly verify it just by counting one of these um, little aggregates and, and I'm up there about 100. So there's an aggregate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I've got about 14 aggregates, so 1,400 bacteria plus the background. So way fewer bacteria in that, just free in the sample. So I'm looking at about mm, 600 bacteria free in that background. So you know, 1,400 plus 600, there we are, we're at 2,000 again. So it's about the same as what I was looking at in the previous um, field of view. but. Now I'm dealing with more aggregates, less just free in suspension, but I'm coming up with the same number. Um, and you have to remember to count your aggregates as well as things that are free. So any difference in the kinds of bacteria and the morphologies, the way they look of, on my bacterial species? No, nope, they're all pretty much the same little sets of uh, cocci, the same little rods, so no additions to make to my diversity list. Are there any fungi in here? No, we got some mineral materials, some nice blocky, square, shiny, very sharp edge mineral materials. So we've got some silts, we've got a, a lot of clay in here. Um, now, clays are about the same size as bacteria. So am I going to be making some error here because I'm counting some clays as bacteria? Yes, I probably am because I can't distinguish using this method. If we send the sample off to a laboratory that does the fluorescein diacetate staining or the fluorescein isothiocyanate staining, they can stain with those stains and instantly be able to differentiate the clays from the bacteria. So they can give you a reading on just one sample. But when we're doing this method, and we can't really distinguish the bacteria from the clays, what we're going to have to do is sample over time. So this is a sample from my field, and I'm going to count the bacteria and clays together this time. In another week, or two weeks, or a month from now, whenever I come back and sample this field again, the clay is not going to change. I still have that same clay background. It's not going anywhere. It hasn't changed in, ooh, you know, several thousand years. So the only change will be as a result of the bacteria growing and increasing in number or the bacteria being consumed or being uh, wiped out through some factor, some of my management, some of the things that might be happening. So they might be fewer in number, and I'll be able to pick that up in comparison to what I started out with here. So clays and bacteria. A month from now, clays and bacteria, what's the change in the bacterial component? So looking at a lot of mineral material in my soil, and bacteria, we've done that in this field. Now let's go looking for our fungi, looking for these strands, looking for the filaments. Nobody home. There isn't anyone here. If I saw a real slender, like a pencil line filament, that's not a fungus. That's a bacterium. So where you really can't distinguish you know, this filament, if you can't distinguish this side of the filament 
can't see any space in between that and the other side of that filament. That's an actinobacteria, and that needs to be written down in your bacterial species list that you've got actinos. Uh, and I usually write it down as the number of strands of actinobacteria. Then I distinguish from the fungi, if I can actually do diameter on the fungi, what is that diameter? Well, people often say, um, then you're going to have to have an ocular micrometer. You're going to have to have some way of measuring how wide that fungal filament is. Well, you've got a built-in um, scale here because the smallest bacteria are one micrometer. So go find one of your smallest bacteria and you go, okay, that's a micrometer. And how many of those little bacteria could I line up in my fungal filament to you know, get from one side to the other? And if your answer is, I can line up four bacteria mentally, get them in there, then you've got a fungal filament that is four micrometers wide. If it's three and a half, if it's two. So there's your built-in scale of measurement when you're looking at these things. But in this particular field, no fungi. Any protozoa. Nothing's moving in here. So, yeah, we are early springtime. The bacteria are clearly growing, having a grand old time, but maybe nobody else has woken up yet this, this springtime. Maybe the roots haven't started putting out any exudates. The soil is uh, only recently thawed, perhaps. And so we don't have a lot of activity. No protozoa, no nematodes. So let's make sure that we get that written down on our score sheet and we move on to the next field. On to our next field. Oh, now we have a fungal hypha in here. So looking at my bacteria, that really hasn't changed, but now I have a very nice fungal strand over um, up here in the corner. So now I'm going to say one fungal strand, what's the diameter and what's the color? Uh, we've got some nice cross walls in here. We actually have two fungal strands in here. So my fungal strand um, you know, let's find my little bacteria. There's a one micrometer bac bacterium. How many can go through there? No, yeah, we're about three and a half. And we've got cross walls and it's got a nice brown color. So now I will put down um, three and a half micrometers and I will write down brown. So that tells me is that a good guy fungus or is that a bad guy fungus? I've got cross walls so I'm going to make sure to record that as well. I know this has to be a Pisidiomycete. This is one of the best fungi that we can be dealing with in our soil. So yay, we've got at least some good fungi in here. Now my other strand of fungal hypha, about the center of the field, is much narrower, but at least it's tan in color. So I'm going to write down 2.0 micrometers clear. Now that could be a disease-causing fungus. So mm, that's not so good, but I've got that really good fungus. Do I have enough fungal biomass, good guy fungal biomass in this sample, in this soil, that I don't have to worry about disease, even though maybe we've got some present. And that's where we've got to finish looking at the whole sample. If this is the only good guy fungus in here, we've got a bad guy fungus. Now who's going to win when it actually comes to your crop growing? This is a real toss up. If these are the only fungi that I end up seeing in here, I'm going to be worried. Um, I know then that I have to do something to fix that biology in that field if I really want to get away from the weeds, if I want to um, prevent any disease from getting into that soil and causing damage to my crop. So um, we need to look at the rest of the sample. Toads, and now we're going to move on to our next field. Now I've gotten to the bottom of the cover slip here, so I'm just going to go over, move my microscope to the left a little bit or move the stage to the right a little bit. And now I'm ready to look at my next field. So you can see how fast this actually gets to be. It's, you don't have to spend oodles and oodles of time looking at every single piece of organic matter. Your eye really wants to be looking at, for those um, lines, the fungi. You want to be looking for movement, which are the protozoa. It's, it's kind of boring looking at soil maybe. Went early springtime, but you need to know where you started from. So